Hello all, how are you? Good, thank you all for being here tonight. I think we have some very important information for, uh, particularly for children in our city since tomorrow is the first day that all of the schools in the city of St. Louis will be closed. Uh, we do know that St. Louis Public Schools is on uh, spring break this week, but we have with us uh, here this evening, several people have been working very hard uh, to figure out how we can make sure that our kids, our children, uh, get the meals and the food that they need while school is out. So I'm going to introduce to you Dr. Will Pinckney, who is the Director of Children, Youth, and Families uh, for the City of St. Louis, and he'll take it from there. Thank you all. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Um, when the mayor appointed me, she, she asked me to make sure that the children in the city of St. Louis um, were able to have all they needed to be uh, healthy, safe, and to ensure their positive development. So I met with and started meeting with the group of people behind you, as well as some of the other schools who are listed on this uh, board over here, to start talking about uh, school closings. And we started meeting on Saturday. And we wanted to think about the challenges that would be faced by closing the schools. And we, so we met Saturday, we met again Monday, and we started talking about food delivery and what that meant to children once the schools closed. Uh, the group behind me, as well as the other schools, uh, had already started engaging in some of those conversations. And so we came up with a plan, thanks to their hard work and dedication. And the plan is what you see there. Uh, there will be 33 sites throughout the city. Uh, three sites will be stood up starting tomorrow, and the rest of them will be stood up starting on Monday. Um, so I would just hand this over now to um, Dr. Brown from SLPS to explain a little bit more about that. Thank you, Mr. Pinkney. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. St. Louis Public Schools, under the leadership of Dr. Adams, uh, has been revising our pandemic plan for several weeks now. We began partnering with local and county school districts um, in the city to ensure that all children have access to meals while school is not in session. Uh, we chose sites that were near within walking distance uh, from children's homes. Uh, we partnered with the charter school districts and independent school districts within the city uh, to make sure that everyone, every child, no matter whether you attend charter, independent, private, or public, or county, will have access to meals during the break. So really want to extend a, um, a thank you to the mayor's office, Mr. Pinckney, for putting us together and helping us coordinate this effort to make sure that all the school districts were in partnership together uh, working on this plan. So thank you. I just want to say, you know, nutrition is important to that positive development of children. And so once again, I'm, I want to congratulate and thank the people individually. I'm going to call them up to speak, but uh, we have Candace Oliver from Confluence Academies. We have LaShonda Boone from LaSalle Miller School. We have uh, Kelly Garrett from Kip St. Louis. And we have Patrice Welcome. Coffin from Carondelet Leadership Academy. So I'll call up Candace now. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, we'd like to thank the mayor uh, and others uh, the St. Louis Public Schools and uh, the rest of the, really the St. Louis City and County uh, as communities and coming together. It's important for us uh, to work together in collaboration to really support the families and students that live in the city limits relative to food. So we're pleased at Confluence to be a part of this effort. Uh, we serve a large number of students throughout the city and will open uh, three of our five sites to accommodate students and families beginning on Monday, March 23rd. So we're pleased to do that. We will offer breakfasts, we will offer lunches, and we will continue to feed and support our families through this uh, challenging time. So we're thankful to the city. We're thankful for the collaboration. I think it's a cooperative effort uh, that uh, we're supportive of. Uh, to ensure that families are taken care of and our kids are cared for. So thank you. LaShonda Boone. Good evening. Uh, we too are thankful to the mayor, Mr. Pinckney, St. Louis Public School and all our K-12 partners. We will begin our food service on tomorrow, 
uh, March the 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we will serve, of course, all our families. We are a small charter school in Midtown St. Louis. And we, of course, will serve all of our families and any persons that are desiring food ages 18 and under. We, too, jumped on board in the collaboration and just wanted to make sure that we were able to provide resources during this uncertain time to any of our families or anyone in our neighborhoods because we recognize that in order to get through this, we have to work as partners and also provide that opportunity for our families to have food. Thank you. I will say all the sites will be operating from 8 in the morning to 12 noon for any child under the age of 18 years old. They do not have to have a school ID. I'll introduce Kelly Garrett now. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Garrett. I'm the executive director of KIPP St. Louis, and we're pleased also to participate in this community-wide effort to ensure that all students, especially our most marginalized kids, um, receive nutritional breakfast and lunch and meals every day during this unprecedented departure from school. I want to thank you, uh, thank the mayor's office, Mayor Krusen, and um, Will Pinckney for helping coordinate and create this collaborative effort. Um, we're excited to be a participating district and know that all districts and schools are committed to serving meals um, to any student under the age of 19. So whether you are a Kipster or a student at another district, we'll be serving to any kid during those hours from 8 a.m. until noon. Um, so thank you again, Mayor Krusen, and for the other districts behind me that are participating in this important community-wide effort. And they will be serving a sack lunch, and in that sack will contain breakfast and lunch. By the way, um, this map, uh, it is complete for now, but it, we are assessing, um, and we're going to continually assess to find out if there are any gaps that need to be filled. And all the schools you see on this board over here are willing, ready, and able to step in and either support the existing sites or to stand up um, new sites if necessary. Patrice? Hi, happy to represent the Carondelet Leadership Academy. We are a site that will open tomorrow, as we've shared, 8 to noon. Um, Carondelet is in the very, very far southeast sector of the city, so we anticipate having um, a lot of meals prepared for whomever arrives. Um, and we're just, uh, again, we're happy to be part of the collaboration and, and to do our part. So once again, just to go over everything, this is a grab and go bag lunch containing breakfast excuse me bag meal containing breakfast and lunch it will be served between the hours of 8 a.m. and 12 noon at any of these 33 sites you do not have to be a student of that site you just have to go to the site we hope that it is close enough to people so that they can just walk there and get food during that time uh, you do not need an ID a student ID you can just show up uh, and be served children must be present to get the bag and grab and go lunch. Uh, and so that'll be um, how it will operate. Like I said, we will continually assess it uh, and make changes if we need to. Um, this group behind me and the other schools that are participating, uh, we will be talking weekly to not only talk about this, but talk about any other challenges that are taking place while the schools are closed. So I'll turn it over to the mayor if you have any final things or we can take questions. Okay, we'll take questions. Thirty-three sites total. I think you said two open tomorrow. Three starting tomorrow. Three starting tomorrow. Yes. A uh, big difference in thirty-three geographically. Is this north and then mid and then I think you said down south. So why were just these three sites initially decided to open first? Three of the largest school districts in the city were on spring break already this week, and so those kids we. Um, believe that they had already anticipated being out of school and already made arrangements. And any other challenges that schools aren't often reimbursed for food if the children aren't, aren't in school at that time, aren't supposed to be in school at that time. You know, you've been focusing a lot on meals, but child care also a huge issue for so many families. Is there anything that in conversations with you for the mayor or for yourself when it comes to child care for so many working families? There's a, there, a decision has not been made on child care, daycare centers or early child care centers. Right now they are open. They are subject to the uh, guidance from the CDC around 50 people, and that's where we are right now. How many of these are schools that will open up tomorrow? What's the third one? And then uh, another question. I see 21 schools listed here. What are the additional schools that make up the 32 sites? So some schools have multiple sites. For example, SLPS, 
Uh, some of those schools, KIPP is listed on there once, but KIPP has multiple schools. So some of that is what you see. Um, one additional site that's open tomorrow is not a school. It's the Gene Slay Boys and Girls Club. Uh, they are also collaborating with us, and they will be open those same hours, 8 to 12. Um, and I'm sorry, did I, did I answer yeah. the question? Okay. Can you talk about how many ballpark numbers that you think kids are actually in the league right now, or will be? Well, all I know is the number of kids in the school um, system, I think it's around 45,000 kids. So uh, everybody behind me and the people on the board are, are ready to feed the kids that show up and to address whatever need is there. Like, is it over 20,000? How many kids are in the school program that you think are playing for? Uh, this isn't about school programming. This is about kids who live in the community. So once again, we're not asking for IDs. Any child, 18 and under, can show up at these sites and get food. So this is about feeding the children in the city. We're not focused, and everyone behind you will tell you, they're not focused on schools or the kids that go to their schools or any other schools. <laughs> the school districts are reimbursed from the uh, federal government, so it's like the summer feeding programs that take place in the summer, and there are other programs as well that are reimbursed by the federal government. Because you're having to do this now, you mentioned summer programs, I mean, is this going to hinder what you guys have to do during the summer? I mean, a lot of families rely on that as well. No, it will not hinder what happens in the summer. Mayor, I have a question for you regarding some other Because a lot of bars and restaurants just got a truckload of food, for example. And we felt like there needed to be a day or two to let these bars and restaurants deal with their staff, deal with their food situation. Many of them are in a very serious transition right now. You've seen some have already closed you, and already gone to carry out only. So it was just a two days to sort of uh, be able to implement this change. Mayor, you Mm -hmm. Any indication why Jefferson City didn't come on board with this today? Or Jefferson County? Excuse me. Uh, no, Jefferson County is thinking about doing their own thing right now. I, I'm optimistic that they probably will come on board. You know, this has been a fast and furious, changing, evolving situation. So, um, you know, we, we felt pretty good that we got four counties to come together. Uh, today and and do the same thing and I think for uh, the people who live in this region we owe them some uh, certainty and we owe them uh, some unity because whether you live on this side of Skinker or the other side of Skinker uh, isn't the point here our our fragmented government makes makes this difficult but we came together we're standing uh, with one decision one voice and we think that's for the good of the region you know, everywhere you look, places are closed, yet we had a crew at the wheel today, and uh, not very crowded, but, I mean, what you know, mandate can you give, if any, I mean, to these places that, frankly, they're still open? Well, right now, what we're w operating under is for events, um, and this will, I, I anticipate that this will continue after Thursday. For events, 50 people or less in a single room, so that's you know, the wheel, you're, you're with six or eight people in a car, they're doing cleaning and that sort of thing. Uh, the the uh, carry out only, carry out curbside window pickup only applies to bars and restaurants starting at midnight on Thursday. So a little different, you've got events, rules for events, which is 50 or less, and that is in compliance with the CDC guidelines. And then you have the bars and, and restaurants. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, every time I've talked with uh, reporters about this, they're like, oh, what are you going to do? One, I have a lot of confidence in our restaurant and bar owners. Vast majority of them uh, are going to follow the rules. They, they're watching the news, too, and they know what the CDC is saying. In the event we have somebody who's not, um, we will send a, an inspector to visit them and uh, get them into compliance. I think it, one last one. <laughs> Is it too early to say yet about long-term, have the businesses talked with you about what's gonna happen? If they have to stay locked, closed, or, or restricted, or 
Uh, we, state and federal, uh, I'll be honest with you, we need direct federal help. Uh, our businesses need it, our residents are going to need it, and you know there's some things going through Congress right now. Uh, I'm not going to predict what comes out of that, uh, but I do think that there is a, a big movement to make sure that the federal government can shore up individuals and businesses. Now, that's not to say that there won't be a devastating impact on individuals and on businesses. Um, and, and that is uh, very heartbreaking. But with the pandemic and with the advice that we're getting from the three major hospitals, VJC, SSM, and Mercy Hospital, who are all standing with us this afternoon when we did the press conference to announce the uh, Thursday night closing, uh, they are very clear that this is something we need to do in order to um, stop the spread of coronavirus. You know, um, I, I'm going to see. I, I can't recall the exact number in the country right now, but I do know that it was 1,200 about six days ago, and yesterday it was 4,800. I don't have today's number, but you can see what's happened to the number of cases uh, very rapidly evolving. So part of that may have to do with testing, and we still have issues with testing. Uh, although they're getting better. So that will have to continue to evolve. And masks, everybody. Okay. Yep. Thank you all for being here. And thanks to all of you guys for coming together. Dr. Eccles, I didn't even introduce you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would have relied.